Hey everyone, Braden here coming to you with a D23 Expo update on everything that happened during day one of the D23 Expo 2019 happening right now in Anaheim, California. We had some famous faces in the building getting Disney Legends Awards, some brilliant fan costumes out on the show floor, a look at new shows coming to Disney Plus, and well, this. Ewan? Yes? Are you going to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? Yes. <laughs> So we got the announcement of a new Obi-Wan show, trailers for new shows coming to Disney Plus. We even got this official timeline of where all the Star Wars content falls from the Age of the Republic to the Rebels to the Age of the Resistance. Even Galaxy's Edge is up there on that timeline. So we're going to dive into all of that right now. As you're watching this day two of the expo is happening and we're expecting some pretty huge announcements today from the behind the scenes at Disney Studios panel where it's rumored we might get a new Star Wars Episode 9 trailer, probably some Frozen stuff even some announcements on new films. Disney is working on some new projects, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that. Not to mention the fact that Sunday, we have the hugely anticipated Parks panel we've been waiting for for two years now. All right, starting off, day one of the expo always starts exactly the same, like they all do. They all start with lines, lines, and more lines. People who started camping out as early as Wednesday, they were the first to be let in uh, to the queue for the Disney Legend ceremony, and then soon a second room filled up with people who showed up the day of very early in the morning. You can see just the sheer scale of the crowds in these photos sent in by our Mickey Views photo correspondents that are there right now. A shout out, thank you so much to them for sending in these photos. And then the Disney Legends panel began. If you don't know what the Disney Legends ceremony is, it's where Disney recognizes their best and brightest with a very prestigious award that less than 300 people have ever received. From world-renowned Imagineers to Disney princesses to the man of the hour, Robert Downey Jr. himself, it was was a star-studded ceremony. The full list of Legends recipients this year included Robert Downey Jr. getting his cement paver here uh, with Mickey. That is an awesome photo. Christina Aguilera got an award. One of the most underrated Disney actors, in my opinion, Ming-Na Wen, who not only has been voicing Mulan since it came out, but also is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And as Bob Iger mentioned, introducing her, she's also going to have a role in the Star Wars universe now with The Mandalorian, the new Star Wars show coming to Disney+. Plus. More on that in a little bit. Seriously, such inspiring people. Also included, we had John Favreau, director of Iron Man, who kicked off the whole MCU. He's also the man behind the live-action versions of The Jungle Book and The Lion King, whose style in those films, I think, really set the mold for how these live-actions recreations work. James Earl Jones was honored as well, although he was unable to attend, so he did like a little video up there, which was really cool. One of the most iconic voice actors of all time. We also had Robin Roberts, Diane Sawyer, Kenny Ortega, and Hans Zimmer also get the award. And then the last two awards they gave out this time at this expo were for parks and resorts people. First, we had Barnett Ritchie, who brought many of our favorite shows that we have in the parks to life. And lastly, we had Wing T. Chow, who has created some of the most iconic buildings we have at the Disney parks around the globe. Following the Disney Legends ceremony, everyone got lined up for the huge Disney Plus panel, uh, where we were hearing word, is Ewan McGregor going to be there? Is the Obi-Wan thing actually happening? Is Obi-Wan actually getting his own show? Are the rumors true? During the wait if you took a stroll around the show floor. There were some amazing people to meet, like this group of women who created Disney princess dresses that lift up and turn into teacups, and then they spin around. Such amazing creativity and ingenuity from them there. Roko dressed up as the Drew Carey animatronic from Superstar Limo, the ill-received former attraction from Disney California Adventure. Also, it wouldn't be a D23 Expo without a Dreamfinder spotting. This year, Disney Dan was rocking the Dreamfinder outfit. It's always awesome seeing some of that classic Epcot still get acknowledged at these fan conventions. Now, let's talk about the Disney Plus panel. Everything new coming to Disney streaming service starting November 12th in the United States. Disney's going to try to give Netflix a run for their money here. To start, we got a look at the wide array of Marvel projects coming exclusively to the platform as part of Phase 4 of the MCU, including Marvel What If, that'll explore alternate realities like Peggy Carter as Captain Carter, as you can see in the concept art here, uh, played by Haley Atwell. Uh, that was teased in the footage. Basically, 
Disney's bringing back a ton of former MCU actors to do all this really cool reality bending, alternate reality type stuff. We also have the Loki series coming to Disney Plus. Moon Knight is also coming, well, which some people call Marvel's Batman. We also have Falcon and Winter Soldier teaming up for a show, and they were out there talking about it. WandaVision is coming, which will explore the relationship of, well, Wanda and Vision. Disney is also working on a Disney Plus series for She-Hulk, which got a big crowd reaction. And then, beyond Marvel, we got the trailer for the live-action Lady and the Tramp for Disney Plus. Those are actually real dogs. This is not CGI this time. You're seeing the dogs here. They're actually at a photo shoot at the D23 Expo on the carpet there, which is so cool to see. Also coming to Disney Plus, The World According to Jeff Goldblum, a Lizzie McGuire sequel, which got a lot of people very excited. This is all great stuff, but let's get to the really big news, which was president of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy. She came out on the stage, and we got the moment I think many of us have been waiting for since the day Disney bought Star Wars, and that is new content starring Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, a concern about this concept in theory and talking about if Disney actually revived Obi-Wan Kenobi is where would this be in the timeline, right? When the Republic fell, Obi goes into hiding, and next we see him, he's on Tatooine with Luke. So I do think there's some room in between for story and adventure in the Star Wars timeline, and that's exactly where this new Obi-Wan Kenobi show coming to Disney Plus will be focusing. Look, I think we all know that probably not all this Disney Plus original content being announced are going to be giant hits. Some of it might not be that good, but some of it could be very good. Because I think given the creative freedom and the budget these projects are getting in order to compete with the likes of Netflix, Amazon, HBO, and even Apple, who is amidst creating their own original content, I think we have a very good chance to get some instant classics here that fans love for years and years and years, for all of eternity, just by virtue of the fact that the people working on these projects are not going to be tied down by the feature film guidelines. It's like feature film, there are these guardrails up, right? There's these things that you can do and there's things that you can't do. You have to do things that have been proven to work in the past because these studios don't want to take a risk and then it all fall apart. They don't want to lose money. Here, it's like those guardrails don't exist. You can do whatever you want. And I think that's going to lend to significantly better storytelling and more creative storytelling if by nothing more than the fact that you can decide how long you want your story to be. It can go past the three hour mark. You can tell a very complete complex story over several episodes and develop characters in this medium in a way that you just can't with normal theatrical releases. And that is why I'm so excited uh, for us to be seeing Ewan McGregor reprise his role as Obi-Wan again, coming to Disney Plus in a Disney Plus show. Honestly, I think this could be a better outcome than if uh, Obi-Wan had gotten his own like a uh, solo style individual feature film. Like it would probably be a little bit more action packed and a little more succinct. But I think in this medium, this storytelling medium, where it's a show and a show length, we can see a lot more depth with the character and everything he does. Let me know what you guys think about that. Speaking of Star Wars, we also got a trailer for The Mandalorian. And if you look at the official Star Wars timeline Disney had up on the screen, you can see that is unfolding after Return of the Jedi, a time that we really don't know much about. How you go from where things were at the end of Episode 6 to how things were uh, in Episode 7 in The Force Awakens uh, when we got the sequels. One of my personal favorite actors, Giancarlo Esposito, is going to be on this project. And also Ming-Na Wen, who I mentioned earlier, she's also in this. The new trailer gave us some beautiful visuals and a really good setting. It really set the tone very well, but it didn't really give us much as to what the plot will be about, other than, of course, it's going to be about a bounty hunter. But safe to say, I think we are in good hands with the show being created by newly minted Disney legend director John Favreau. Such an exciting day at the D23 Expo. Let me know what you guys think. Be sure to subscribe with those notification bells on because we've got day two of the Expo going down right now. And then the big moment on Sunday, 10.30 to 12 p.m. Pacific, of course, with the Disney Parks panel. So excited for that. There's one more bit of news today from the Expo show floor I wanted to share. Disney was doing demos of the Disney Plus user interface. Let me know what you guys think about it here. The homepage content, you can see it's sorted by studio. But if you go and look at the user profiles you can make under the account, you can make up to seven and select your own Disney avatar for each. Think of this, a family of seven can get all the original content we just talked about that is coming exclusively to this platform, Disney Plus, and they can get all the back catalog of Disney films and television 
all for just $6.99 a month. That is going to be wild. Disney Plus is going to be huge. What really has me thinking Netflix is going to be in big trouble here is they went to a kid's profile, and you can see in the kid's interface the content instead of being sorted by studio, it's by type of child-friendly content they want to watch. They can watch Mickey Mouse stuff, princess stuff, action stuff, and just tap on whatever they want. Disney's library of content for kids, especially on Disney Plus, is just going to knock Netflix out of the water. And that's not even to mention these more adult audience originals Disney is creating with things like The Mandalorian and this new Obi-Wan show that I'm so excited about. It is going to be absolutely wild. Live from the D23 Expo update set, this is Brayden. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with you very soon. Have a magical day.